Now, if you are a football fan, it won't have escaped your notice that France is in the middle of hosting the Women's World Cup. But park that for a moment, because as of tonight, there is another game in town. The Africa Cup of Nations kicks off tonight in Cairo. 24 teams, four cities, and of course, just the one winner. Well, let's talk about the big game then with Peter Alleghi, an avid fan and the author of African Soccer Scapes, How the Continent Changed the World Game. Good morning to you. Thanks very much for talking to us uh, on the programme. Uh, let me start, if I may, with some quick fire questions uh, for you. First of all, uh, who do you think is the favourite this year? Uh, the favourite this year is probably Egypt, followed closely by Senegal. And why is that? Uh, Egypt, because they're playing at home, which is a huge advantage in a major tournament. And uh, Senegal, because it performed so well at the World Cup in Russia uh, last year, and it has uh, very much the same roster of players, including the superstar Sadio Mane uh, from Liverpool. Yeah, another Liverpool player lots of people will be familiar with, Mo Salah, of course, playing for Egypt. Are there any other players we should really have our eyes on as we watch this competition? Uh, Koulibaly of Senegal is a terrific player as well in the defence. And uh, I think if Senegal can pair up the strength in the back with uh, uh, Mané's dynamism up front, uh, they're really the biggest threat to uh, winning this, uh, this Africa Cup of Nations. Let me ask you, if I can, um, about the atmosphere uh, for this tournament. Now, I'm in Paris, which is hosting, as I say, the Women's World Cup um, at the moment. And I, I have been a bit disappointed to see that outside of the areas directly around the stadiums, so you maybe couldn't tell that here in Paris there's actually a World Cup going on at the moment. Do you think um, that in Cairo will be different? Will it be full of people wa watching the games and perhaps throughout the whole continent? How, how excited are people about this, this uh, competition? Well, the Africa Cup of Nations has declined in popularity in the past decade or so, I would say, mostly because African fans have turned their attention increasingly to the English Premier League and La Liga and UEFA Champions League. And so they're not as excited as they used to be uh, for this premier tournament on the continent. But if Egypt uh, goes deep in the tournament as it should, I think you'll see the excitement building. But I think the political context makes this a tricky tournament to predict how it's going to play out in the streets. When you talk about the political context, are you referring to the situation in Egypt? Because, of course, this tournament was supposed to be initially held in Cameroon. It was moved to Egypt because of security fears. But perhaps are there security fears in Egypt too? Uh, certainly, uh, being the first 24-team tournament also in the history of the competition uh, has made it more complicated than usual. That's why Cameroon uh, lost uh, the right to host it. But uh, yes, I think uh, in Egypt, with the military regime uh, having a tight grip on freedom of expression and assembly, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be challenging. Uh, remember in 2011, uh, during the Arab Spring, the football fans in Egypt played a leading role in the street politics. And so I think the security uh, is going to be very much uh, on alert for uh, possible uh, uprisings uh, should uh, things go wrong. Yeah, that's right. And in your book, um, you do talk about how uh, football in Africa has this kind of political side to it, how in the past um, football stadiums were used as a space to kind of challenge colonial discourse, uh, to fight racism. Do you think today football still has this really overt political function uh, on the continent? Well, not as much as in the past, but uh, football does provide a space for dissenting opinions to be uh, expressed in a relatively safe manner. And it's also, you know, one of the few places where you can get tens of thousands of people uh, together and uh, chant, for example, criticism of the government, uh, sing songs against their leaders, etc., and uh, get away with it. So, uh, yes, I think there's still political resonance uh, within stadiums and uh, the game, uh, though it's become more commercialized, uh, still retains that political power. Um, there are a number of players aren't there who are of dual heritage, who are of dual nationality, who could perhaps have played for European sides, but play for African ones because it's easier to get on. Uh, it, it is less competitive uh, on, among African teams. Is there a sense of almost African sides being of second tier in that way um, because um, it's easier to play for them? 
Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think uh, there are a lot of individual decisions that need to be made in each case. It's hard to generalize. Uh, I do think that there's great pride in one's heritage. And, uh, you know, just because you were born, say, in France, for instance, uh, but uh, your parents come from uh, Africa, you know, you still retain that strong cultural bond. And so I wouldn't underplay the meaning that it has to represent um, your African heritage in a competition. Although, yes, you might say that if you're in a country like France, it might be easier to play, say, for Senegal, perhaps, than it is for Le Bleu. Uh, but that may not be true in, in a different country, perhaps. So, um, you know, let's, let's say that it's nice for African players who've given so much to the European game, in my opinion opinion, uh, to have the opportunity to choose who they want to represent on the international stage. You mentioned then that this is going to be the biggest uh, competition of its kind, 24 teams, the first time it's ever been so large. How do you think having such a big competition will affect the tournament this year? Oh, that is an excellent question. Um, you know, I think CAF in many ways is trying to uh, imitate and to some extent uh, UEFA, which also expanded the, the Euros uh, to 24 teams. Um, yeah, we're, we're very much from the outside trying to see how they will manage such a large tournament. I think one of the problems is going to be sustaining interest because, you know, you have about 40 percent of Africa's national teams represented in this tournament. And uh, a lot of them are there. Uh, they're inexperienced sides. It's going to be hard to keep people's attention focused on this tournament for an entire month. Um, but uh, we shall see how it turns out. We shall see indeed. And I note that you are uh, in Senegal, not in Cairo yourself. So mm -hmm. I have to ask you, uh, on the other side of the continent, will you be avidly uh, watching uh, all of these games? <laughs> Yes, I'll be watching uh, the games, but I'll be traveling as well. So hopefully wherever I go, African football will follow. It's one of the great things about the game today is it is available on multiple platforms all over the world and we all get to enjoy it um, very much. So uh, I'm looking forward to the, to the games and hopefully to some brilliant football. Yeah, so am I. And, uh, and here on France 24, you can uh, catch lots of the coverage as well. Uh, Peter Alegi, thank you uh, very much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us uh, just before the African Cup of Nations uh, kicks off in Egypt uh, this evening.